So let's use a given ratio of similar triangles, in this case 7 square centimeters to 28 square centimeters, this is exercise 13 by the way, to solve for a missing side, and that missing side would be here, that's xy. I'm going to relabel it, um, or also refer to it as lowercase z, opposite the vertex z. And again, it's you know this pertains to similar figures. It doesn't matter exactly what their shape is, as long as, um, as one individual shape is, as long as the two figures are in the exact same shape, they would be similar. That was from a previous chapter. Let's just work on the math here. So this is what's given. We have a ratio of 7 to 28. Notice I don't say 7 centimeters squared to 28 because uh, ratios are unitless. I can simplify that ratio, noting a common factor of 7. So the ratio of the areas is 1 to 4. And as you have guessed right away, you say, aha. I take the square roots of both of those, the principal roots, and therefore the corresponding sides have a ratio of 1 to 2. Now we could very, very mechanically set this up, that 4 centimeters, or 4 is to z, as 1 is to 2. Or you could just say, well, it's got to be twice as big. Um, all the corresponding parts of the red triangle are twice as big, no matter how you see it. The missing side that we're looking for, x, y, is going to be 8 centimeters. And let's explore another one where we're given the areas, find the ratio of the areas to find a missing side. This is straight from your textbook. We did this in our sketchpad lab. I'm calling the missing side v, lowercase v, to make it a little bit easier. So let's just start right with it, jump right to it, the ratio of the areas, the red to the blue. I like to color code it, make it easier for us to talk. Red to blue is 88 to 198. How on earth would you simplify that to 4 to 9? Well, you should have at least seen their even numbers. And then you might say 44 to 99. Then the, the common factor of 11 would jump out at you. So the author really set you up to make this easy. Of course, uh, in the real world, you'd probably have radicals and irrational numbers. But let's go with this. This is high school, after all. And of course, then the ratio of the sides would be the principal roots. So the ratio of the sines is 2 to 3. Now there's three different ways, well, there are multiple ways you can think of it. You can make a ratio. I could write the ratio this way, and I'll say that the V is to 10 as, I have to remember what the blue is, as 3 is to 2. Or I could read it left to right. I could say that the 10 is to the V as 2 is to 3. Personally, I like this one better because my variable's in the numerator. Or I could just look at it and say, you know, that means there's a scale factor, and the scale factor is 2 to 3 if I'm going from the red to the blue or 3 to 2. I guess you'd have to understand what the scale factor means. Every component is one and a half times as big in the, um, in the blue as compared to the red. No matter how you do that, Whichever of these three methods, the answer should jump out at you that V must be 15 inches. Well, here we go with um, exercise 15, which is one of those wonderful error analysis problems. We're given that the ratio of areas is 1 to 4. Let's visualize it. That means it looks like this. This one, tri this one rectangle would fill in. It would take four of them to fill in this area there um, to the right. So let's do that again. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, we got that point. But look at the sides. Clearly, the height is doubled, the width is doubled, and we know that because we would take the ratio of corresponding sides would be 1 to 2. Again, if I took the principal roots of 1 and 4, they'd be 1 and 2 respectively. And therefore, this is inaccurate. And it might be better, I might be better off if I said this. It's going to be twice 12 or 24. Well, here we go. Exercise 17 from the textbook, which describes a pair of rhombuses. Yeah, rhombuses and woozles. Well, we've got these two rhombi. Well, you figure it out. We've got a rhombus here I'll call the red one, and the one on the right we'll call the blue one. We've got dimensions, remember the diagonals, 25 and 14 feet respectively. The diagonals here are unknown. 
and we know the area for the blue one. So let's calculate the area for the red one. Okay, let's talk more do. Let's first rescale this so I can make some sense out of it. We'll move this over here. And maybe we'll move this wee one over here somewhere. And we know that we can use the area of a kite um, for a rhombus. In the case, again, and this is for the red rhombus, I've got the red diagonal, 25 feet, and I've got the green diagonal, which would be 14 feet. So that works out pretty easy. And I've got an area of 175 square feet. That's for the larger, and if you will, the I'll call it the red rhombus. So now, um, well, let's, what are we going to do with that? We've got an area of 175 for the large rhombus, 28 for the smaller one. Where'd that come from is we were given that. Recall that was a given in our problem. And we're going to use this ratio of the areas to find the diagonals of the smaller, the wee rhombus. So, um, we know this. That's the ratio of their areas. And I could simplify that. I noticed they both, both of these contain a factor of seven. How'd you notice that? Well, there were a lot of practice. So the, this area is to this area as 25 is to four. Okay. That means that the ratio of the corresponding sides in this case, I, I was saying MP to RT. They're not sides, but they're components. <clears throat> that would be the diagonals. Behaves the same way. The ratio of the corresponding parts, let's say, is 5 to 2. Uh, again, I took the square root of 25, square root of 4. All right. So that means that we can now say we've got a ratio of sides that's 5 to 2. Sides also would refer to the diagonals. And I can calculate them. I've got the red diagonal, and that means I'm talking about this wee one down here, A. This diagonal I could find because 25 is to A as 5 is to 2. So there you go. And the green diagonal will obey something similar, but of course we have 14, so we have this diagonal, 14 is to B, as again, as five is to two. Now you can solve these, no matter, I'm not, I don't really care how you do that, but by now it's, you, you probably are, this one with similar fractions, the red one, the green one, cross multiply because you'll get a decimal, and in either case, you're going to come up with those two values. And remember, what you've solved for are the diagonals. That's the full length from R to T and as well from U to S. That is the diagonal. And there you go. And another similar problem, but um, I like this one. It includes this phrase about the area of the triangle ABC is approximated here. So we can just be approximate. Exercise 21 in your textbook. We are given three side lengths, so I suppose we could use a formula to find the actual area, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go with the approximation. So here we go. We know that the ratio, this is a given, that the ratio of the sides is 12 to 9. And where does that come from? Well, and again, I'm going red to blue. I just picked these two at random because they're whole numbers. 12 and 9, I could have picked 6 and 4.5, 10 and 7.5. Uh, I just had to pick corresponding sides. And these are nice and easy because I can simplify that to 4 to 3. And then, of course, those are the, those are the uh, corresponding sides. These are the, our, and this is our theorem 11.7, which we've been using throughout. And we will just square it and say we have a 16 to 9. This number is familiar to you because we've talked about this in class. Aspect ratio of full screen 
to HD or widescreen if you were considering rectangles. So those numbers are familiar to you and we see those a lot in these problems. So let's set up a proportion. I think we'll have to scoop this triangle over just a wee bit like that. Ah, there we go. So that the area of the red triangle to the area of the blue triangle is again uh, in the ratio of 16 to 9. And I'm going to substitute. You um, recall that the 17 is an approximation. So all I'm going to do then is when I do my cross multiplying, uh, I'm going to cross multiply. I'll come up with 30. And I did come up with some decimal change, but I'm just going to say, well, this is all approximate. And in the real world, yes, that's what you're doing a lot. You're not guessing, you're calculating, but you with the understanding that it's not an exact measure. So the red triangle, about 30 square feet, and we're done. Well, here we go with extended response. Love these exercises, number 33. A lot going on from this chapter and the last. So let's, well, let's launch right into it. So much going on here. We recall that way back in our uh, last chapter, angle C and angle E both intercept the arc BD. So they intercept the same arc, they're on the same circle, they're congruent. Same argument can be made for the other two angles indicated here, they intercept the arc CE. Which of course by angle angle makes for at least this pair of similar triangles. So we've got one pair similar there. Um, but then we also have this pair of similar triangles. And this pair, you can see, because each of them contains angle A, congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So angle or triangle ACD is similar to triangle AEB. So we've got two similarities going on there. And all right, let's move, let's just do now some of the quick arithmetic from last chapter. We see our two pairs of, of sorry, similar triangles. And um, let's solve for this x the old-fashioned way using a secant secant power theorem. The exterior portion times the whole secant equals the exterior portion times the whole secant. And just crank through this arithmetic very quickly. Remember to distribute, subtract, and then you've got your answer. So I know that this measurement x is 8. I knew that from last chapter. Now let's clean up this drawing and, and see if we can answer any more of this. We need to find some ratios, part b of this. So after, after all that we can conclude that with these two similar triangles, their corresponding sides, 8 and 11 respectively, which yields a ratio of areas 64 to 121. We'll take the squares. Easy, easy. Now let's look at the other two resulting similar triangles. Remember these two are overlapping, the green one and the tan one. And we can see there that their corresponding sides would be in the ratio. Remember, add the red and the blue, that would be 20 to 18. Let's simplify that 10 to 9 before we square to find the ratios 100 to 81. And we are done.